it's, it's funny, you know, uh, in, in China, uh, people see the blue sky for the first time. Some, some children see the blue sky for the first time in their life. Uh, in Venezia, they, for the first time in many's life, they can see fish in, in the channels. I, I, I think uh, what we're seeing now is um, a start of something uh, greater. Uh, towards the, the green shift and the blue shift just because uh, people see now that if we come together and, and pull in the right direction um, as as a global community we can actually get so so much done in so short time if you're just uh, putting your efforts in the right direction. Pick Up Here presents the Future of the Industry series. This time we're interviewing Leif Stravostrand, CEO of Evoy creator of innovative electric propulsion boats. All right, so um, Leif, first of all, it's great to meet you. Uh, of course. So how long have you been involved in the maritime industry for? Wow, uh, that goes way back. Um, uh, I guess it's been my whole life in one way. Uh, my, my parents worked in uh, fish farming when I grew up. Mm -hmm. So I was... Uh, around their legs uh, when I was just a toddler. And then, uh, yeah, and I grew up on island, so I've been around water all along. Um, moved into uh, shipping and, uh, and uh, yeah, I've been working with the sea my whole life. So where did the idea for electric boats come from? Um, well, uh, throughout my career, I worked my way up to uh, as a sea captain. Mm -hmm. um, I also have a naval architect uh, background and, and all of this comes from my love and interest uh, of the sea. Um, and back in 2005, me and my dad, we had uh, one of our uh, whiskey evenings. We were just uh, discussing new opportunities and new things to do. And one of the ideas that we came up with was uh, an electric boat. And we started to look for like electric systems that we can use for the boats that we wanted. Um, and we couldn't really find anything out there on the market. So the idea comes from there. And then uh, if you fast forward to 2017, there was still nobody that could offer us the, the propulsion systems that we wanted, like high output, uh, full electric. So we said like, you know what? I, I think we have the competency to maybe pull this off so we just started up evoy then in uh, in 2017. so what are some of the benefits of electric propulsion i've heard a lot about it i know yeah. that's yeah I'm, if you could please well, share it's it's actually anything or everything you can think of it's it's a pretty much the same as electric car it's it's more silent it's more reliable there's less cost of use and of uh uh, of course, less maintenance mm -hmm. um, and a lot of um, and, and the quickness of it, of course, you have that um, bottom heavy torque in, in the beginning. And uh, so there's always that uh, imminent power ready for you when you need it. Um, and then, there, of course, there is uh, the issue about the energy storage, uh, which is the same problem with cars. So there's a limited range to it but it's actually enough for quite a few mm -hmm. so i heard uh people call you call you guys the tesla of the boating industry ah oh, that's such an uh everybody's trying to call themselves uh tesla boating but um well we do we do work with quick boats so in that respect it's uh and a lot of power so i i suppose we can we can live with that comparison so I also saw that you recently, um, you reached a world record as the fastest electric boat, right? 55 knots, approximately 100 kilometers. Yeah, it's uh, all its first year produced uh, boats. And uh, we actually, we couldn't get a hold of the timing equipment uh, to make an official run, but our GPS showed 55 and the old, old record was 51.3. Uh, so we're, we were uh, quite a bit over that. Is that a goal that you always had your mind to? All right, we want to break the world record and be the fastest boat in the world. Oh, who doesn't want to be the world's best or fastest of something, right? Um, yeah, sure. Um, when we started with uh, the prototype, we said, well, why not? It looks like we have the power enough for it. So let's see what we can do with this. 
uh, but it's 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 a really odd thing because the boat is super heavy. Eh? It's four thousand kilos, while the old record boat was less than half of that. So it wasn't uh, clear that we would make that goal, but uh, we did, and that was uh, that was cool. And uh, we have even quicker boats in mind for for the future. Wow! When when are you planning on launching them, or when are you planning on producing them? Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know how much I can say, but uh, before the coronavirus, we were this far uh, from from starting the progress mm-hmm. uh, process towards it and now we're holding back a little bit but um, I'm pretty sure we'll see something during this year sounds exciting yeah it's gonna be really cool so um, I know that you guys also received endorsements from uh, Prime Minister uh, Erna Solberg what what type of encouragement was that to your agenda and what you guys are pushing for and what you guys are doing um there's there's a very strong acknowledgement in norway i think that um uh, well the 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 economy in norway is quite uh, oil driven uh and there's acknowledgement here that you need to focus more on clean energy and the blue opportunities around the ocean industry uh so uh, she mentioned and she said that's also a reason why she accepted to uh, to do the endorsement and uh, be the godmother of the um, of our uh, prototype. Um, uh, so, where do you see the market heading right now in in light of recent developments? Do you see this as an opportunity to promote a more sustainable approach, a more greener agenda? Um, I, I think. It's, it's funny, you know, uh, in, in China, uh, people see the blue sky for the first time. Some, some children see the blue sky for the first time in their life. Uh, in Venezia, they, for the first time in many's life, they can see fish in, in the channels. I, I, I think uh, what we're seeing now is um, a start of something uh, greater uh, towards the, the green shift and the blue shift just because uh, people see now that if we come together and, and pull in the right direction um, as, as a global community, we can actually get so, so much done in so short time if you're just uh, putting your efforts in the right direction. Yes, it will hurt. Uh, a lot of people's lives will change on their way, uh, but we don't have a choice. We have to move in that direction. and. And the opportunity that lays around the ocean and the ocean space is uh, is enormous, and I, I think that's something that uh, all countries and and societies and and regions that's close to the sea must must grab and 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 work on those opportunities. How do how do you see people in our industry in the maritime industry promoting, pushing a more sustainable approach forward? Um, what are some of the things that we could do as industry leaders in order to make sure that um, that the world does adapt to a more green and blue approach. It's um, of course. Uh, I, I think there's two main shifts that we probably would see. Um, I think um, we work mainly uh, with the small boat, smaller boats like below 15 meters. Um, and I think if you work on the ship type and the bigger uh, type of industries, you really, really need to focus on the hydrogen and the ammonia technology that uh, is, is being developed now and, and do your best to, to push and, and uh, develop that. And in smaller boating, uh, ammonia and hydrogen is also going to be a part, but a much lesser part. And I think the battery... Uh, technology that's coming along there now is going to be really, really important for the for the green shift. So if you're in the industry, you should uh, try to educate yourself around um, using electric propulsion for for uh, boats and for bigger vessels, and and see what you can do. Look at the systems out there and and see how you can adapt them to your use. Because uh, what what we're missing now is maybe volume. Like uh, we need we need those front runners that's willing to take uh, that a little bit extra effort to try something a bit new. Mm, to set um, an example, be the uh, pioneers. 
Exactly. And, and that's what we need now. We need those that dare to uh, try new things. And of course, there might, it might have a little bit higher cost. It might have uh, some issues in the beginning, potentially, but uh, we have to go through that phase. We don't have a choice, as I see it. Um, how big is the current, um, is the current market uh, for electric boats? Um, well, we, we have been trying to find numbers on, on this and it's not, it's actually not very easy mm -hmm. uh, because it's a very, yeah, it's a very diversified, diversified uh, industry and um, it, it's not very big. It's, it's a very, very few, it's maybe a percent or two of, of uh, total now and uh, maybe not even that. Mm -hmm. So it's it's really small, but uh, I I think that we will see the same um, uh, kind of curve that we see for electric cars. I think we will see the same uh, for electric boats now. It's it's just natural. Uh, what's holding us back is the batteries, but the batteries are becoming increasingly better and better for each year. So. Um, that uh, S curve that you kind of see from the electric cars, I think you'll see the same now for electric boats. So what would you describe as success in the coming years, um, both, for, both for your business and for the industry in a whole, as a whole? Well, it's, um, of course, there's a long way to go. Uh, our numbers or estimates is that there's around 50 million boats, uh, smaller boats in, in the world. Um, and for a lot of places, there's maybe not so easy to do that shift. They might not have electricity available in, in a good way, and they are not ready to take the initial cost, higher cost with uh, electric uh, as it is. But um, I, I think we're going to we'll go through an important shift in, in the years to come. And, um, and it's also important that the governments uh, in, in the... The, the C governments are, are helping along, so to speak. Are you a member of any um, kind of party or international organization that supports uh, maritime travel and maritime industry? Yeah, we have, uh, we're a member of uh, several of the Norwegian, uh, uh, that's again, member with the international ones. Um, so that's how we try to comp contribute that way. And we also went through, um, accelerator program last year that's called Catapult Ocean uh, and they're also uh, work, working very hard within that industry and, and, uh, and trying to do as much impact as they can through through startups um, so so that's also in sport important definitely and it also seems that um, one of the benefits of being in a Scandinavian country is is the awareness regarding sustainable initiatives and, and the support that you get from the government itself is that correct that's true. Um, nothing's perfect, but uh, what is, uh, there is possibility to get some funding now for commercial customers wanting to go electric in Norway. So that's really, really positive. And, and several of our customers have already get, gotten that funding, uh, which is uh, helping the, the decision making uh, coming along. Um, so, so that's going to be important. Uh, for for that side of, of the customer base but um, I think also there are a willingness to pay a little bit more for the electric systems because when a lot of people see and understand particularly that has experience from electric cars that um, there is uh, the use of cost and maintenance is so much lower that even though the initial cost maybe is a little bit higher then you will earn it back fairly quick. So it's there. It actually makes sense economically too, not just uh, in a greenhouse gas uh, window, but also in in uh, a financial window. So um, I th if I'm not mistaken, Evoy says that within three three to five years already, you can see ROI, right? Return on investment. Um, shift that's shift. for a typical uh, commercial user, uh, and that's also why we have focused on that market first. Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, fishing boat, fishermen, uh, fish farming, and that, uh, but we also have um, other professional users that maybe use their boats uh, 500 hours a year. We've seen 1,000 hours. We have 
one customer that has 1,500 hours a year on his motor. Um, and these type of customers have a very, very, very quick uh, ROI. Mm. Um, on the private side, our leisure boating has usually much less hours. And then there's more. Then, then you can compare it more to like solar power. So there's typically more than 10 years on our ROI for, for private users today. But this, this will come down as, as the battery cost comes down. So where do you see the industry heading right now? I mean, it seems that, you know, with the lockdown, um, both the recreational boating industry is kind of going to suffer a little bit. But then again, I think when, when all these restrictions and lockdowns open up and you're allowed to go back on vacation and go back on your boat, I think it's the, the industry could really boom once again. Well, we, we're seeing a funny thing here in Norway. Uh, nobody really predicted that. Um, the last uh, two weeks since we launched our, um, our press release about the outboard, uh, we've been, I think we received about 1,000 uh, emails and phone calls. Wow. Uh, so we have 10 times tripled or 10, 10 times the normal activity. Um, and we've talked to a lot of boat makers in this. And, and what is surprising to us is that uh, they have the same orders, if not more. Um, I talked to a company in Canada yesterday and they said they, they have a rush of orders. And I asked them why, why, what's going on? And they said, well, people aren't allowed necessarily to go across uh, borders. They're not maybe even allowed to go to their cabins. They're not international travels. What they do is they buy a boat or fix their boat uh, so that they can go on the water with their family. Uh, it's one of the last like remaining things you can do along with your friends or not necessarily your friends even just just your family where you can get out um so uh, i i think that may might might actually last into the the post corona uh, phase yes yeah i really hope so and uh because i heard also in hong kong um they're enabling people to go back out and the amount of orders that they've been receiving for boats and boating types of uh, chartered vacations have, have skyrocketed. Um, and also apparently in Italy, it's the same thing. They're also receiving a lot of demands once uh, summer comes along, hopefully when everything is behind us. Um, so I do believe that there is a lot of opportunity over here if, um, if I guess there's, there's a lot more awareness regarding um, this, the maritime industry and, and the benefits about you know, just going out, hmm. and breathing some fresh air and then going on your boat. Yeah, for sure. Uh, we definitely see that. And, and for us, uh, it's quite frustrating for us right now that we don't have all our products ready uh, because uh, uh, it's, it's hard to guess how many, how much we could have gotten into the market right now. But uh, it's really frustrating to see this enormous interest and we're not uh, ready to actually ship it to the customers and, uh, and customers uh, on the outboard side. But uh, we'll get there as fast as we can and, and hopefully help uh, and, and be an important step towards uh, sustain, sustainable boating. Um, how can we as industry leaders really cooperate in order to um, work together and to bring people out back out to the beach, back out to the water, and um, also push this green agenda forward? Well, I, I think... Um, there, there, there will always be naysayers and there will always be people that uh, uh, there, there was a lot of protest uh, like uh, when the horses went out in a uh, hundred years ago. Um, uh, all, it, it's, it's natural for humankind, humans to hold back on changes. It's, it's scary. It's scary for everyone, uh, particularly now. But uh, I, I think industry leaders around the maritime uh, industry needs to uh, be able now to step up and, and show the way uh, and just talk positively about the change that's coming because there is enough of those that wants to uh, bad mouth it and, and we, we actually we feel like we've succeeded halfway already because we have so many trolls now that it's, uh, <laughs> uh, and we need uh, a weight against uh, 
uh, all the naysayers and the trolls that are working so hard against the natural changes that's coming anyway. So I, I think that's where potentially everyone can help a bit. This has been uh, this has been great. Um, yeah, so I guess that's that's pretty much it from my end. Um, anything else you want to share with the audience, people who are going to be listening to this? Something about a uh, positive outlook, optimism, something that you see for the future? Direction well, you're heading. It, it's it's been a dire comp couple of weeks, and it, it's been uh, gloomy and dim uh, in many ways, but. I, I think uh, for um, a lot of people now, it's 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 really tough, and uh, almost everyone knows somebody that's been affected somehow, and 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 people are actually dying here. We sometimes forget that. So this this has been, and it is uh, a super super serious situation. But I think at, at the same time, it's important to keep in mind that. <clears throat> the great world wars and and all the big shifts that's been in society the last hundred years uh, has also given great opportunities um, and i I think uh, if if you're trying to think ahead and uh, think two and three and five and ten years ahead it's it's important to try to gear yourself and gear your companies towards a direction that where um, you can make a positive change and a positive impact. Um, I think that's maybe a, a good good advice. I, I agree 100%. I agree 100%. All right. Yeah. So well, thank you very much. I really appreciate your time and hope everybody at home enjoyed this. Thank you for watching Pick Up Peers Future of the Industry series. Be sure to follow us and subscribe to our channel to receive more great and relevant content from industry leaders of the maritime industry.